Hi, uh, my name is uh, Rachel. I'm a transgender. I'm a transgender woman. I have to tell you I'm a transgender woman because I get mis misgendered because of my voice. Um, so, my experience with uh, violence in a relationship or in a marriage, I was married, uh, was uh, that as a transgender person, we like to try and fit in. Uh, so I tried to be accepted into the community, into society by behaving as a man. So that meant, you know, getting married and having a family so that I would portray that I'm a normal person. I mean, I know people don't like the word normal anymore, but that's how I was expected to behave. Uh, and this was during the sort of 70s and 80s. Information on transgenderism was non-existent. There was no internet. So there was a lot of anxiety anyway, because you knew there was something wrong from a very early age. But nevertheless, you go into a relationship, into a marriage, because it's expected of you in that, in that sort of generation. But transgenderism, kicks in at a very early age, so it's always being suppressed. So you go into a relationship knowing that you've got problems and yeah, try to suppress it, but it's not a good thing because it just builds up inside. A lot of stress is building up. But you act, at, act the role of a, a good husband and a good father. Uh, you have children uh, and then, yeah, there comes a day when uh, I, I was discovered dressing up as a woman by my wife. And in that instant, life just changed, changes beyond anything. Everything is turned upside down on its head. Um, and your partner, my wife at the time, just didn't understand what I was doing. She was angry, frustrated, felt let down, betrayed, all those human negative attributes come pouring out, mainly through ignorance. Uh, she was becoming scared because her ideal environment, secure home, having a good, I had a reasonably good job. We didn't have financial problems. She could obviously see that was all going to change. Uh, so we tried to uh, agree that I would keep it suppressed, but it, it really doesn't work. You know, inside, deep inside, you know that you need to be a woman. Um, transgenderism is a very complex situation. <laughs> um, but what happens then is the, the, the anger comes out and the verbal insults start to flow. So. Things like, you would call me a freak of nature, um, a pervert, a fetishist. I mean, just just carried on, sort of, it appeared never ending. So this also causes additional stress for someone who's transgender. You start to feel inferior. You feel as though you're a freak because you're hearing it every day and uh, you start to lose self-esteem. It falls over into your job, you go to, to work and clearly there's something not right. Initially there was no sort of um, physical violence, um, but sort of more verbal violence. And um, what happens then is the anger in me grow so most days were just arguing matches you know just anything would trigger and bring out the negative emotions in both of us so we're becoming louder there's more arguments every day and of course it spills over onto i had a daughter we had a daughter because we wanted to be look as a normal family so then it, it actually impacts not just me and my wife but also my daughter and this 
goes on for many, many years, this psychological, verbal abuse, being loud. I was always very frightened that the neighbors would hear that I would, she would out me without any control for my job or just being out doing the shopping. If something would trigger her anger, then I was always anxious that I'd suddenly be outed without any control over the situation, which is also not good. So this went on for many, many years, trying to yeah, live this normal life, li creating this facade that when people look at us, we were a normal couple behind the facade. Now go back into that era, the, there wasn't any professional help, professional support. Uh, the mother-in-law suggested we go to marriage guidance. But marriage guidance hasn't got the skills to really to fully understand um, the complexities of being transgender or living with a transgender person. So that didn't work. It just didn't have the professional skills to help a relationship which was sparingly out of control. The atmosphere became poisonous, became toxic is a, a word. The environment, there was no intimate contact anymore. That stopped soon after she discovered I was transgender. She didn't want to feel as though she was a lesbian. And so even the, yeah, the intimate contact, the, sexual intercourse also finished, you know, so, which is also not good in a loving, caring relationship. And eventually, uh, the anger spills over into physical violence because you're not getting professional support and knowing how to manage human emotions. Then often there's a, a point when the the verbal um, anger would spill over into physical violence. I, I was on one occasion, I was face was scratched really badly, but I had to go to work the next day. <laughs> so uh, really awkward. So I made up a, a story that I'd fallen off my bicycle. I, they knew I cycled to work. I, I fell off into a hedge and got scratched. But I mean, I don't think I convinced anybody that that's what really happened. So um, the, the physical violence occasionally happened and I'm getting punched and bruises, things like this. But predominantly in my relationship, my marriage, it was a verbal abuse. Until it comes to a point when you can't take it anymore and then you go through the separation and divorce, which then also through the divorce process which isn't very, it, it creates a, a, a hatred, a revenge type situation as well. So the, even though the, we were separated just through that process, the, the verbal abuse and the, having to come out and divulge your inner private uh, feelings to a, to, a, to a notaire, to a, a judge, also has, was also very, very, difficult and um, it just drove a bigger wedge between our relationship and yeah that, that was the final uh, we lacked looking back I, I, I can understand her attitude towards me everything that she dreamed of as a, a, a nice caring family was completely blown away uh, a security was blown away looking back uh, yeah I know it's no violence is to be acceptable, but yeah, I, I can understand. Well, uh, I was discovered, uh, it lasted um, about, uh, surprisingly, about 10 years. We, we, we carried on with this toxic environment. It progressively got worse when you, you come out. Yeah, it, it went on for a, for a very, very long time, and those, those years were pretty bad, I have to admit. They were pretty sad and sometimes very lonely, very confusing for everybody. And, and yeah, it, it ended in, as it always does, it, in divorce by the fact that she realized that she had, we had a daughter, so we had a, an obligation to make sure she was had a, a good environment and that 
my transgenderism wasn't affecting her. So we endeavoured, we tried very hard to keep that normal environment until she was um, in her teens and could probably understand that. And then, uh, then, my, then my wife felt it was time for her to find a, a, a real man. That's what, uh, so that was why she left. She wanted to find a real man and she was still at a reasonable age when she could recover some of her life. She often mentioned that her life had been ruined since I came out as transgender, so yeah, sorry. The transphobia exposed uh, I experienced was, yeah, the, the, at the time, I, I guess it was transphobia. Yeah, indeed, the, the way that uh, I was degraded wasn't really a human, I was a freak of nature. Those, those to me is a, a trans, transphobia. And uh, I mean, at the time, to be honest, I just, yeah, I, I, I didn't know it was transphobia. There was no sign of compassion uh, from my partner, uh, from my wife. Uh, when she left, I felt terrible. You, you, you failed as a, as a father, as a husband. You feel failed in every way, which is not a good feeling. Um, I then tried to not accept I was transgender and started to go into another relationship, to be honest, which was not good. And I realized I'm not going to put the, my partner through this experience again and came straight out to her that I was uh, transgender. I wanted to become a woman and that's, and so I, don't want to continue the relationship because it's unfair on you. However, she really changed things around and said, no, you need help and I'm going to stay with you and you need help. And she, she found a, a psychiatrist I could go to and start seeking professional help. Sadly, that wasn't there for my first relationship. And it, it, maybe if it was, then uh, we could have salvaged something. A lot of the problem with the anger and the bitterness and the need for revenge is through ignorance. I mean, transgenderism was not widely talked about in the sort of uh, 80s, beginning of the 90s. Uh, and so, yeah, that was, that was the beginning of me being released from this, uh, this toxic environment and I found, luckily I found somebody who was prepared to stick by me, help me. I found Jean Le Pluriel, which is an organization specifically to give support to transgender people and it was brilliant, yeah. Yeah, no, it was from the, 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 the help from organizations like, uh, first of all, the, seeing a psychiatrist uh, who, had, um, who had understood transgenderism then uh, a recommendation from her to go to uh, Genre Pluriel was my main organization here in Brussels. They, I, I was mixing with people with my own gender, my own transgender and listening to their experiences. So sharing the same uh, problems that we, in relationships really helped me understand what it was and, and released me from all that stress, the, the feeling of guilt, accepting the transphobic comments. It, it was able to, I was able to get rid of them, you know, it wasn't me, you know, I, I could start to become, a, you know, a human being, if you like. I wasn't being classed and looked at like a freak, freak of nature. So it was a really real release from me and the stress that had been built up since the age of five, you know, it's gone. Yeah.